Okay, so I'd like to just start by saying this. The uh, character in the Star Wars movies that have been coming out now, the last two movies, the Negro character, the black guy, so-called black guy, that man does not represent the kind of Negro I am. I'm ashamed that he's even in that movie doing that, being a simp, being a weirdo, uh, with his little Brit accent. I understand Hollywood has to start getting a lot of the Brit, you know, so-called black guys because some of these American uh, so-called Negroes just probably aren't going to do some of these roles. I don't know. Or maybe they just prefer these dudes from Britain because they're easier to use and uh, play, utilize and play. Maybe they prefer them from Britain. I don't know. All I know is um, I don't like being embarrassed as an individual part of a group, especially not in these days and times in the sense of, really, dude, they threw you a lightsaber in the first one, and you barely could do anything, got beat down like a little punk, and the girl whoop, whooped on a homeboy so, so raw and viciously in the uh, forest, and you laid out with your booty up in the air, black guy, really? And you've been trying to like hit on this chick the whole movie? And she's telling you to like stop touching her, let her go, get back. And you know, you're being called traitor left and right and all this other stuff. Huh. Yo, man, I mean, really? So I just want to put that out from my voice, from my mind and spirit. Yo, he don't represent me. He ain't got nothing to do with where I'm coming from. Cause I don't play that. That Star Wars movie was whack, and I assume this one coming is gonna be even whacker. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, nah, I'm not with all that. So I wanted to definitely put that out now. Um, I mean, I could just go down the line and list of movies that, you know, I'm not cool with the way they have the um, Negro in them. And hell, the Stranger Things, whatever that's out now, I haven't watched it. But, you know, they always got to throw one token up in there. And it's like, dude, I, I appreciate Franklin from Charlie Brown in the sense of he hardly said anything. And he was like really in the background. You know, I could deal with that. But it just gets to the point where you're just like, okay. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that feels that way that's a Negro, but I get tired of seeing a representation of me in entertainment, and they trying to make it like we just, you know, we punks, we be, oh my God, and screaming like women and running, and we don't know how to fight, we have no heart. You know, it's Mighty Whitey that comes and does everything. Or, you know, the great, uh, you know, Hispanic God comes and does something. But us? No, we too busy running and being, you know, allergic to cake. And it's just like, you know, I couldn't be the only one that sees this. And if y'all really is that pussy where you're just going to watch this shit and not say nothing or hear about it and not say anything, well, that's cool. I'm saying what I have to say about it. I don't agree with it. It's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and... Fuck y'all. Everybody that's doing that shit, the industry people, fuck y'all. Because that's not us. You know, I understand we under a rulership. We got to take little, you know, losses here and there. But it gets to a point where it's like, you know better than that shit. And we do too. Because if anything, y'all the ones that's going to be running and scared of some shit. Maybe I'm wrong. But don't paint it like we're all running and screaming like bitches and hopping on chairs over spiders. It's not cool. Having a female save us. Not cool. Big burly black dude getting beat down by a little tiny, uh, <laughs> tiny Caucasian lady. Not cool. Hell, I don't think it's cool when a big uh, burly white dude's getting beat down by a Caucasian lady. You know, they need to ki kill that noise too, all that. Oh, these women are strong. Well, it's, uh, it's kind of a misnomer. <laughs> Excuse me, that's kind of a, a lie. Let's just say what it is. It's kind of a lie. It's a straight lie. Because if you're strong, you don't have to say it. You prove it. You know, and I understand there's this whole push to bring down the, the male psyche and bring down, you know, the, the huevos of the man and the machismo and to make us, you know, all want to be bitches. But everybody's not going to conform to that, ladies. It's just not going to happen. Or, you know, whoever else is helping y'all with that shit. It's not going to happen. There'll always be real ones that stand up and say, nah, no, no, sir, no, thank you. 
I don't agree with it. I don't want it. But yeah, I've been thinking about this for a while, about this Star Wars thing. Can't can't stand it. I didn't like the Jar Jar Binks crap either. You know, every so often they got to pull out some more, you know, a yes and visa maza bullshit. And I understand. I do. I understand. They miss us. They miss having good old slave, good time slaves and free work and, you know, the labor they got. You know, get them Negroes out there to get to work, boy. What was that joke? Jump down, turn around, pick a bale of cotton. They love that crap. You know, uh, what I, here's an example. I came over to visit one uh, Hispanic dude as a friend of mine, seeing how he was doing. You know, I'll be real. I'll tell the truth. He got shot. Now, I don't know from, you know, what he was doing, but I have my ideas. But nevertheless, I'm figure I'd drop by, say what's up, and then get my ass up out of there because I don't want to be the next one to catch a bullet for no reason or for whatever reason he caught one for, nonetheless. So one of his homies is there. He's like, hey, I got a joke for you. I'm like, I'm already knowing. I'm like, you know, I don't want to hear no motherfucking jokes, man. Because any joke you're going to tell is going to be some bullshit. I can already feel it. He's like, check this out. What's the difference between, a, what do you say, a black owl and a regular owl? I'm like, I don't know, motherfucker. Well, the regular owl says who, and the black owl says who that? Ha ha ha! Yeah, that's funny, man, that's funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's the worst fucking joke I've ever heard. And my homeboy was like, damn, dude, really? You gonna, you gonna try to air out my boy like that and tell that joke to him? And I'm just looking at, you know, the dude, too. I'm just like, okay. He's like, man, I'm just joking. You know, just, people in Florida love that. I'm like, this ain't Florida. And, you know, what people love that? Black guys love that joke. I'm like, well, that's great for them. I don't like it. Don't bunch us all together. I said, because there's bitches in every group. I'm like, you just happen to be standing in front of one that isn't. I'm like, I'm, you, you would hate that if I was telling jokes about, you know, your race and thinking it's cute and funny. That's just, it's rude. And it's stupid. You, you're trying to make stupid shit happen before you even know a person. That's dumb. But, yeah, you know, I, I've gotten that my whole life. You know, put somebody want to be, you know, I guess relate to me. I, I love this one. Okay, hey, what's going on, bro? Like, what the f- bro? I'm like, huh? Yeah, soul brother. Soul brother. I have a name. Call me sir. You don't know me or call me mister. Or ask me my name. Mr. Motherfucking such and such, Mr. Nigger. But they're not bro. Or when they're upset, yo, whatever, bro. I'm like, what the fuck, <laughs> bro? Just say nigger. Stop playing. You know, it's all these undercover feelings. And it's like, you know, most of us, from what I know, Negroes, we, we understand. We know what we face and we know where we at. This is a war, we behind enemy lines. You know, the Caucasians in their rulership and they having a great old time and the women is having a great old time trying to take over from, you know, the Caucasian man. And that's fine because most of us that got sense is looking for the most high. We don't got time for this, you know, worldly bullshit because this shit is going to come to an end on a real nasty level. These women, they're agents of chaos. And I got that from uh, that's not mine. That's from Chronicles of Judah. I heard that from him. Good channel, by the way. Chronicles of Judah, and he, he, uh, he'll always say that women are uh, agents of chaos, and you know I agree they are. Every woman I've ever known, including my own mother, was an agent of chaos, an agent of chaos. They would do shit that would start really negative things or really uncomfortable things, or you know, it'd just be sitting there like, damn, or in the situation like, what the f- why? Why did you need to go to that level to make something? happen so you could get some attention or you could put bad vibes out that's just how they are you know it was it necessary to run and go you know make things happen like that just to uh prove a point I, and i love this one that they they would tell me at times at different points in my life i'd hear this from different women i wanted them to feel how i felt i'm like what well, <laughs> so because you was heard about something you want to make the person feel it just how you felt to get a reckoning on that level you know, you want to go behind on all these different avenues to hurt another person because you got hurt. And I'm just like, you know, it's funny because a woman did tell me this exact same thing once. She said it's easier to walk around and be a jerk than it is to walk around and do right. And I was like, oh, you know, whatever, you know, that, 
It's just not easy to be a jerk. It's, it's hard to be a jerk. And as the years went by, you know, that would hit me in the head, that saying. And I'm like, you know what? This girl's right. That's crazy. This girl's right. It is easy to be, you know, mean and deceitful, hateful, unpleasant. And it's harder to be, you know, agreeable and compromising and nice and decent, you know, with people and with just yourself. And I think sometimes we get caught up in a lot of stuff where we just, it's easier to just be like, fuck it. I feel like that too. So, you know, hey, I can't say that it's impossible for one to sometimes be going down the wrong road on their emotions or their uh, even feelings that are, you know, validated. Because the stuff I just talked about a while back, I honestly feel like that stuff holds merit. It holds water. It holds water. And it's um, it's very, uh, it's factual. I've lived it. You know, and that's just the tip of the iceberg of stuff I've had people do and say and try to uh, have happen, you know, because of what they perceive me as because of the way I'm colored. And yeah, the way I'm colored says a lot. It says a whole lot. And I get that. It's, it's a connection to a culture. It's a connection to a whole history. And, you know, it gets deeper. It's a threat. Because there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on that's, you know, hanging on a thread, basically. And, you know, the Negro is the one that can basically break the thread and expose it all. If the Negro would look around and research and listen and use their brains and not let this crap program you. I remember, I'll say this and I'm going I'm to drop it. All of it. All my life, uh, I'd be watching TV and I'd be talking crap to the TV. You know, I hear something I didn't like or a commercial come on. I'd be like, whatever. Yeah, right, chick. Or make a joke back and forth. Whatever, dude. Or whatever, man. I ain't trying to hear that. No, thank you. I don't want your Ginsu knives. No, my brother. It ain't that I got to buy my own. I'm going to just turn on the tape recorder and record yours. With your permission, of course. You're just joking around and shit. But, uh... I found that it's better than just sitting there watching and listening and laughing on cue or feeling sad on cue or getting angry on cue or getting excited on cue. If you feel me getting excited on cue, it's like a trigger machine and it's programming you, it's uploading into you. And I find the way to fight that, well, of course, don't watch TV. But, you know, I'm a child of like the, you know, the 80s and. Man, I was watching my TV back in the day. It was a whole thing. HBO just came out on a level. I mean, it's, it's always been a part of my life. But I've always talked crap to the TV. And I've always had these people that say, what you talking to the TV for? The TV can't talk back. And, you know, it's just like when the same people have told me that money don't grow on trees. Yeah, it do. You're a damn lie. Money does grow on trees because it's paper. Don't lie to me. Yeah, the TV is talking to me. That's why I'm talking back. It's a media machine, and it's being used for way more than we know that it's being used for. All this stuff that we're finding out about, all these so-called whistleblowers and exposed and all that, that ain't no real stuff. That's, that's a little true for a bunch of lies. I'm real. I'm not getting paid to do this shit. I don't know nothing hardly. I'm very uh, naivete learning. Still, you know, young, not young, dumb, full of cum, but young mentally as far as understanding of the ways that is wickedness in this world. And, you know, hey, I'm not playing any particular kind of game where I'm trying to uh, be a plant and lead my people, my, lead my people, my men, you know, or my um, demographic down a fucked up road for profit. And I wouldn't do that. But there are people out there that would. And they can smile right in your face and treat you just so nicely from a distance, through the camera, whatever. My, uh, my thoughts. It's 217. If it was 1999, if it was 240, don't trust none of this. All of this stuff is built for other people to come up off on. Don't nobody care about us, period. We have to care about us. And we ain't really going to care too much about us either. And you know it's true. Just be decent to the next person, but at the same time, be on the lookout. 
because they want us all in a nice little row like they had a bottle of waters when they all packed up in the plastic together, you know, the 24 pack. They want us in nice little rows all neat and packed up and marching in line, marching in step. Listen to Cashmere and open your brain up a little bit by Led Zeppelin. Open your brain up. He's telling some real deep stuff in that song. <laughs> you know, and there's some lies in that song too. Talking about a gentle race. No, they're not gentle. They're not gentle, but they're trying to sell themselves as gentle to us. Because it's easier to fool people when they're, you know, taken off of their guard. Or when, what is another thing these commercials use? Like the, the emotion, the emotion hit. When somebody tries to go off your emotions real deep, that's how you know it's bull. You know, if they're in their emotions, that's one thing. But if they're trying to hit you and make you feel the emotion, like, oh, feel bad. And you know something's not right or feel good this way instead of just saying, hey, this is how I feel. You know, take it or leave it. Like one uh, famous slang uh, starter said, it is what it is. That's the most realest thing ever for this time. It is what it is. Stop doubting all this stuff and trying to do all this deep research and research. You know what? You research in too deep. You start running into more and more lies. Go with your gut. Go with your, your your own brain and what you experience. Talk to your own brain about what you see and think and what it's looking like. Because from what I know, the sky is blue because it's all water up there. We're covered with a dome of water. Now, wouldn't that be something if that was for real? From what I know, it is real. The sky is blue because it's water. It's the cleanest water ever, too, up there. And it's way far away. But, you know, they, they look to the Bible for everything and anything, and that's in the Bible, too. But that's not true, right? Everything else is true. They didn't believe it. And this says this and this says that. Well, it also says that there's a, there's a layer of water covering over us. An affirmant, affirmant, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Firmament, firm. Yeah, let me not show my ignorance too deep. Firmament, I believe. Firmament. Well, whichever, it's a blockage to keep the water from coming in, but it's water. That's why the sky's blue, from what I know. And there's still watchers up there watching. A lot of times I've been on channels and people say, oh, I don't want to get too religious, and I don't know if you believe in this and that. I really don't care. I'm just telling you what I think. This is for me to just give my thoughts about what I'm feeling about these things and what I've experienced and what I find to be true. I'm not saying anybody needs to follow or not follow. I'm just saying take it for what it is for me. Because from what I've learned, and I grew up in nice neighborhoods where it was all you know fine and dandy, and then I got a little older and it got very racist all of a sudden. All of a sudden I wasn't um, accepted like I used to be and my family wasn't accepted so well, even though we had money to living in the ghetto uh, where I kind of was a little off there too because I had all this education but I'm around my kind that isn't as educated as me and I stick out like a sore thumb on a certain level to being up in you know rougher cities and running around doing stupid shit so I've had a little taste of a, a little bit of everything but just not too deep because I've always had something around me in my head that says back the hell off before you get too deep in it because there are points of no return and everybody especially men every man should know about the point of no return and stop themselves no sense wasting your life you know but nonetheless you know I've went through things where I feel like I know enough to be able to speak on some of the stuff that I see and hear and hell I'm part of this time I see what I'm seeing and I'm seeing what I'm seeing and I don't like a lot of it because a lot of it's bullshit, a lot of it's empty, and a lot of it's use as distraction. It's no, there's nothing real coming for us. There's nothing real being given to us. It's all, don't worry, go back to work, be happy, don't uh, make waves, don't stand up, don't cause trouble, leave women alone, stop raping women. I'm like, well, I ain't never even wanted to rape a woman. What the hell is that, you dirty men? I'm like, well, when did this start? Women are, women are being uh, bothered. I'm like, women have always had it good. Women have always been living nice. 
that's just the victim bullshit role so they can keep propaganda and keep their little game going because they're some of the best manipulators ever. I used to think women were the awesomest, bombest thing in the world. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. Oh my goodness, this girl's so fine. Oh, baby, you're so fine. Oh, you good. Oh, I want her, I want her, I want her, right? When I started really seeing what women were about, 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 about my heart was broke because they dirty. I had a, a woman that was in my family that was super close to me, did some real dirty stuff to her husband. And when I found out about it, 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 it messed my heart up because I'm like, you you would do that to him and you still ain't even coming off the real. I ain't got to confess nothing to nobody. I'm like, damn. So I've seen little, you know, slippings of the mask over the years from women. And yeah, they a trip. They real raw, they rough. But all that victim and protect women and women need to stand up, this that's a bunch of malarkey. That's shenanigans. Women's living real nice, baby. That's why everything's all screwed up and flip flopped. Cause they living real nice and uh it's being made where the men ain't doing too well. Where they're turning us into villains. And we're not villains. If anything, we love straight up and deep from the heart, if given the chance. But yeah, you screw over a man left and right. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. We get raw after being screwed over enough. But, you know, most men from what I've seen and being one, I didn't start out wanting to be negative towards women. I've always wanted to have a nice girl, a nice young lady to call my own. But that ain't how it works in this world. As I found out and as a lot of other men have found out. What uh, they say and what it is is two different things. Like uh, another so-called Negro said, to be or not to be. That's the question. And that's the question I be asking myself when I go and deal with stuff or even, you know, get on this stupid platform and talk. I don't even really want to be on this kind of level because I don't really got much to say that's going to help, but... I feel like, who knows, maybe there's somebody out there like me and they haven't discovered things like the way I discovered things on uh, this this platform. It's helped me through a lot. Uh, Element helped me through a lot mentally. Uh, Chronicles of Judah helped me through a lot. Um, shit. <laughs> Chris Cantu. Uh, I was there when he first started on his journey. That was very cool to see. Uh, he's blowing up too. I'm like, wow, angry Mig- MGTOW. He uh, agitates me a bit, but I can relate to him. Um, he's helped me on uh, levels mentally. You know, it's like having a bunch of brothers. And that was one of the things that I felt that I had lacked. Brothers on a certain level. I had cousins and I had sisters, you know, and they're girls. And, you know, it's, it's like having brothers, uncles, and, and dads around when you uh, deal with MGTOW on a level because steel sharpens steel and if you're a male, if you're a man you, you need another male to sharpen you you can't sharpen yourself and a woman can't sharpen you either so you know, it's channels like that um, B I can't remember his name right now uh, I was just listening to him too B BGMT oh damn it I'm embarrassing myself for not remember I'm sorry brother but um, I do listen to you i just forgot your name i'm bad with names uh but he's a real solid dude i'll um write his name in the description um who else i know this is rambling and going on long but you know what anybody listening to this on a level got a little time to spend hopefully so let's see um i definitely already mentioned element and that's for sure um the MIG, excuse me, MGTOW philosopher. You know, he's a bit of a, a prick, but I like him. I like him. You know, he's a loud mouth, but I like him. And I think he's got a lot of good points. I like how he jumps right up on it with these chicks and how they act and the, the just the, the hypocrisy that's popping off. I love it. I love hearing it. You know, like I said, he's a bit of a prick, but, you know, a lot of times you, you accept a man and, as, as he is. You don't need to worry about telling another man how to be. You know, as long as he's a halfway decent person, 
you know, respects the uh, the line of manhood that we both got, you know, I can understand and let him be him and not be me. So, and I think that's a big problem that got started with us men that we're, you know, we want to try to school the next man on it. No, we need to just let each man be as he is and respect it and let them respect you for who you are. Like I said, uh, MGTOW make, make philosopher, um, MGTOW 101, you know, uh, it's just awesome, these channels, to hear this stuff finally and it went through it for years and not knowing, like, is something wrong with me? Am I crazy? Or... You know, was it the f no? What it is is there's too many women around, and there was nobody to like pull my coattail or pull my collar and say, "Hey, man, don't trip. This is what's going on." Try to understand it from this level. Hell, you know, I'm not trying to be mean to my dad, but my dad used to be trying to pressure me to get married. I remember that he was always saying, "You need to get married. You need to get married." I'm like, "Oh man, he got married, divorced." And uh, I stood there when they took him off life support. And uh, my mom's wasn't there and didn't give a damn and wasn't trying to be around when he was sick. So, yeah. And they were married. So, now nah, it's nice to, you know, be able to relate to other males that see what's going on. Because this has been going on for a long while. And it's just been undercover. And now that it's coming out, these chicks is going nuts and trying to be all cool about it. But yeah, no, it's it's out. It is out. You can't hide. Everybody's getting, you know. Oh yeah, Black Ram. That's uh, that's that's my boy. That's my boy. Black Ram. I like listening to him. Cause you know this shit is therapeutic, man. Like that. You know, there's a, there's a lot of good. Uh, channels out there and then like I said I'd like to take them for what they are and it's nice to get um, tutelage from uh, other men everybody can't be no damn chief everybody can't be the you know the head of the company and that's the problem for me what I'm seeing that everybody want to be number one number uno I'm this I'm no nah. sometimes sit your ass down and learn something everybody want to be the one and know everything don't nobody know everything Gotta listen. Gotta let some other people talk. Have, have, and don't get me wrong. I know there's a lot of nonsense. Hell, some of it comes from me. But you know, everybody can't lead. Even Prince said that with his gay ass. Everybody can't be on top. Pop life. Everybody cannot be on top. And you know what? From what I know, you really don't want to be too high up on top. Most people can't even handle that that position because that's a dangerous spot. That wasn't that Caesar that was running around. Talking about, are there, are there no more friends or enemies left? E2 Brutus. <laughs> and they, they be having some real problems. Where they can't trust anything. At least when you are down to earth on a certain level. You have one or two people. So it's just it's just food for thought on levels. You know. I'm not uh, all knowing. And I'm not all ignorant either. But yeah, it's just nice to have these outlets where you can listen to it in private you don't gotta and it's a, it's a way where a female can't jump into your space too because that's another damn problem you can't do anything now without a female jumping in your space and if she ain't jumping in your space somebody else jumping in your space to, to go snitch to the female that to jump in the space it's like damn there's a lot of snitchy ass motherfuckers there's a lot of bitchy ass motherfuckers there's a lot of bitch motherfuckers it's just like wow so it's nice to be able to, you know, click on a little, you know, YouTube or whatever and uh, put some headphones on or go somewhere private and listen to some real shit because TV is not going to give you anything. They don't take things. If any, <laughs> they take it. You know, don't get me wrong. YouTube is full of, excuse me, it's full of shit too on levels. Don't think they're not. Don't think a lot of these people ain't bullshit and plants and puppets and you know what? I don't know what else, but let's just say, uh, Huh. Everything ain't always what it seems. What did Curly on the Three Stooges say? Truth is stranger than fiction, judgy. Truth is stranger than fiction. And I've learned that it is. It really is. And with that, I think I'm out. Yeah, I think I'm out. Am I out? 
Oh yeah, yeah, guilty pleasure. That damn Justin Bieber song, um, "Confident." I, I'd hate to admit it, but I do like it. Poor little boy, they didn't, you know, they ran him through the ringer. Let's not even go there, but I did like that little confidence song. <laughs> he was trying to really, you know, come off on that. But uh, it's unfortunate sometimes when things that are so nice start so nice and pretty or nice and um, just where you admire it and it gets corrupted and dirtied and ruined and broken. And I think that's what this whole thing is about. This life is being able to, to understand that there's beauty here and to be cautious because it's going to be nine times out of ten, something's coming around to corrupt it and to break it and to ruin it and try to hold fast to yourself, to who you are, to what you were raised to be. And if you weren't raised to be anything proper, to strive to be something decent. And if you don't want to be decent, then strive to be a you know, piece of shit. But be sincere. But yeah, you know, I think that's what this is all about. It's about trying to be able to hold on to what's right and what's good. I'd like to think that most of us out here want peace and want nice things to be around us and don't want a lot of drama, a lot of uh, confusion, and you know, chaos. Maybe I'm wrong. I've always been... Uh, a little out there about um, what uh, I hope things could be, and I grew up watching a lot of '80s cartoons, so you know, a lot of that shit was um, fantasy, fantasy, fantasy. You know, so maybe I'm tripping. Either way, I've always felt, hey, keep it pushing. Don't let these people uh, program you and tell you what to do. But at the same time, don't be trying to make it where you're causing, you know, anarchy out there and hurting others. At the end of the day, everybody's going to have to pay for what they do anyway. Nobody gets out of this alive. <laughs>